All right, guys, welcome back to part four of this Lambda tutorial series. Hopefully you've been enjoying it so far. Um, you know, I, I want to keep it as light as possible. So let's just smash out this next one. And like, if you've been following along to this far, it should be working pretty well. Um, please let me know in the comments if you do have any sort of questions about anything. Um, but you're doing a get, that's the first thing on line five here. You've got then happening, which takes the data. Um, and then we feed that the body of that, which is a buffer in, we resize that, put it in a buffer again and send it to our put object. So pretty, pretty simple. Um, let's try and finish this off. We're gonna add in some handling of the errors and a few other things. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna say that with then you have the option of saying dot catch as well. So let's just first of all, just sort of straighten this up a little bit. So what we wanna do first is just to fix up things, make them a little bit prettier and just sort of handle our errors. So here we have our then, so this is our, this is our outer scope then. So what we wanna do on that is we actually wanna say dot catch and we can say catch and we can put in here an error. Um, and what we can do is we can have a function that will execute if there is any error that has occurred during that, uh, during that then block, right? So here I'm going to say console.log uh, error. Now what that will do is log out the error down here if anything occurs in this then block. Um, so what we wanna do essentially as well is we wanna have where we can have callbacks in them that can be caught with the then functions as needed, right? So we wanna have this as much as possible to really make it more granular about where we're actually having our error handling. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just push this over. We're gonna push this over here um, just to sort of pretty this up a little bit. So also what I wanna do here is I wanna take this S3 put object and I also wanna put a dot then at the end of that as well because it's a promise object, remember? So we can do this. Um, so I want to do this here uh, because I want to sort of give some sort of completeness to everything. Like this is the end of it here. If it's done that and it's come back, then it's complete. So that's essentially what we want out of this. So what we should say is, let's just say that this is going to be console.log complete. So one thing that we're doing here is we're using console.log a lot. Now console.log is not really going to help us in the context of Lambda. So we need to start thinking about this as a Lambda function instead of just a function that we're going to be executing locally. But quickly, we'll just add in one more catch here, just so if there was an issue with our put, then we would get the error here. Um, so we should put in error here, and then we can, of course, console.log error, and we'll change these console.log in a moment um, to something called context. Uh, and now context is relevant to Lambda itself. So this is pretty much the, the finished object though. I'm pretty happy with this. We're gonna, you know, we've got a little bit of error handling in here. It makes a bit more sense, but now we just need to change these console.logs into something that is called context. Uh, and we can actually give a context done or a context fail, depending on what happens with our Lambda function. So first of all though, this is not a Lambda function at the moment. This is just some code on my laptop. So what we need to do is we need to make this a Lambda function. And the way we do that is we use handler. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna type in here Lambda. So here you'll see a snippet that I have, which basically just exports a function called handler, right? Because remember exports is what we do when we want to export something to an outer scope or a different file as such. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say exports and then handler is the name of the, the thing that I want to export. Um, and then in here I have an event and context. So what I'm gonna do again is pick all this up, dump it straight inside here. So now we actually have uh, the Lambda function as is, right? Lambda functions always have a handler and you always need to export that out to the, to the outer scope. And they always have an event and they always have context in which they're executing. So the event is actually the thing that is causing it to trigger. In this case, our put object into S3 is going to trigger our Lambda function. So that's gonna be our event. And we can actually see what that event looks like, right? When that event is actually triggered, it's just JSON that actually triggers it. Um, so that's actually going to be our trigger and we'll have a look at that more in a second. But we also have this thing called context. Now context is where you define the state of your application. So you can either have context fail, like we said, or you can have context done, which is complete. So whenever we have an error, we don't really wanna just say error you know, console.log because then we'll have a completed successfully Lambda function with errors in it, it wouldn't make any sense. So what we need to do is we need to change these console.logs into context.fail and then fail with that error. So what we can do is just change these down here, change this one and change this one. So then now it will fail our actual Lambda function if there is an error, which is good, which is what we want. And instead of saying console.log here, we're gonna say context.done. Uh, and all we do is we pass in here null as the first 
argument and we can pass in complete as the second, you know, whatever we want to say that it is complete. So that's a little bit more neater, right? Now we're building it like a Lambda function. Now it actually sort of makes more sense. We have this idea of context and we have the idea of the event as well. We haven't talked about the event much, but this is really important. And this is how we're going to be able to get rid of these static bucket names and key names, right? This is key. We need to get rid of this sort of stuff. So to get rid of this, I'm going to use another snippet that I have and I'm just going to type S3 and then tab. Now, what this is, is a way to represent the source bucket. So in the event, we need to say, hey, like, what is the source bucket? Like, what is the bucket that this is coming from? So here is the event, and we should obviously bring this side uh, inside here, because otherwise it won't be in scope. So here is the actual source bucket. So we can say this is the source bucket, and it is in the event, which is this, which is here, right? Inside the first record, so records is a property of the event object that gets passed in. There is S3 because that's the, the type of trigger that we're using is S3. And then you have the bucket and then you have the name of the bucket. So that's all available inside the actual event. So we can actually get this source bucket from the event. And the source bucket, of course, is this one. So we don't need that anymore. So what we can do is now we could probably say uh, dest bucket as well. We can make it a variable called dest bucket. And we can actually make it the same as the source bucket. Um, but what we can do in here is we can just say that it is this and then it's also resize on the end. So we always get that source bucket. We know what that is. And then the destination bucket is going to be the same with a slash resize on the end dash resize, right? Nice and simple. So now we can take this and we can put this down here over the resize bucket. And now that just leaves us with the key, right? Okay. So now we just have the key. So when we take the key, let's just say const key and we can do the same thing. We can say event dot records and we can access that first one dot s3 and then we can say the object we want to reference the object and then the key of that object right so now we're able to get the key out of that object so that makes it really easy so now we can actually replace this with that exact key because we have the key that's in the event as well and then for simplicity's sake what we could do is instead of saying cat3 resize we have the bucket already called resize. So what we could do is just make the key the exact same as the key that it was when it picked it up. However, this time we're putting it into a bucket that denotes that it's been resized anyway. So it doesn't really need a new key name. It can have the same key name, right? Because it's going into a completely different bucket. And see, being able to do this, we've completely parameterized it, made it dynamic, and it's, it's far easier to read, right? So here we can see the, the key. Uh, so now we know this information is, is legit. So this is all pretty good. We've got this all nicely sorted now. But the only thing that is in here is the resize. And we can keep the resize dynamic for now. Just imagine that you need everything to be 100 by 100. And of course, you can, there's clever ways to handle this. You could pull it from a, uh, the metadata on the S3 object, for example. You could have a, a width property there where you actually take that in and specify that. But for this sake, we'll just leave it as 100, 100. So to me, this looks pretty damn good. I think I'm ready to actually roll this out in Lambda. So there's a lot you can do around developing locally with Lambda functions. But one thing that I usually do is I work with a task runner as such. There's Gulp or there's Grunt. There's a few in the JavaScript world. So what, I want, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to create something called a Grunt file. And this Grunt file is going to contain some code that I'm just going to paste in here um, because this is just sort of arbitrary task runner code. It's nothing that you know, actually requires any sort of logic. And I'll have this available in the GitHub repo as well. But what this is actually going to allow us to do is package up our, our Lambda function into a distribution file and push that for us into our Lambda function that's in AWS. It's going to sort of create one for us, push it up there, and we don't have to worry about a thing. One of the other great things about this is that it allows you to execute the Lambda function completely locally on your laptop uh, and then really get a feel for if it's going to work or not. And you do that by using a event.json file. The events.json file is actually mocking the actual put of an item into S3 to simulate what happens when that trigger is actually called. So we have our grunt file in there and I'll just make an event.json also and I'll dump this in here. Now this is completely available online. This is just a normal S3 put event and you can grab this from anywhere. Um, but essentially all that really matters is the bucket on um, and you know, that's really it. And the file, I guess, the key, right? The key that you're actually wanting to access out of that because that's what we, you know, that's the information that we're going to be using uh, in, order, in our function, right? We need to make sure that's legit. So what I'll do is I'll leave this here. Um, Flynn bucket is of course going to be the bucket that we're going to have our function run on. That's what's going to be triggering it. 
So as you can see, we have the Cat3 JPEG inside the Flynn bucket and jumping over to the Flynn bucket resize, we don't have anything in there. So we're, our function's ready to be tested. So inside my grunt file here, all I'm gonna do is paste the on of my Lambda function in here. Um, and I, all I've done is create a blank Lambda function with nothing in it and then just sort of, I'm going to put that on in here. And of course you can just get that out of the Lambda console. If you go in there, it'll be in the top right hand corner and you can see the on, simple as that. Um, I'm putting a couple of options in here and that's really as easy as it is. And then you have a couple of tasks down here. So what tasks do I want associated with this? So I have a package and a deploy and I also have an invoke as well. So all I need to do to get this running is just npm install the grunt and also and the grunt AWS Lambda. And I wanna save these as dev dependencies only. I don't wanna save these in my main package because I don't want these to be part of my zip file when I push it up to Lambda. I just want them here on my laptop locally for testing purposes. Okay, so that's finished now. And if you cat the package.json, you should see some dev dependencies down the bottom now. So that's what we expected, which is all well and good. So what we can do now is we can actually say grunt deploy. And what that will do is actually call the deploy functionality that we specified in our grunt file, package everything up really nicely and push it into our Lambda function that we specified with that on right inside there. So here it all gonna package up nicely and there is the upload. So that's really cool and that's done. So now our function is up there. We can invoke that function as well. So what I'm gonna say is grunt invoke. And what that's gonna do is take that events.json and run it through the whole process as if it was actually simulating a real event. So here we go, grunt evoke. Oh, message key in params code missing parameter. Okay, so, and the reason why we don't have a key is if you actually look in the object here, key is actually lowercase. So here's the S3 object. Here is object the property and here is key. And what we've actually put in our code is uppercase K. So let's just make that lowercase and that should be good to roll. Cool, now we're getting the error that the specified key does not exist, which is good because the key actually does not exist. If you have a look here, we're actually looking for cat1 and we know it's called cat3.jpg. So we need to update this to make sure that it's looking for the right key. And this is really good sort of troubleshooting, really good things to run into. So you get sort of an understanding of what exactly this is doing. So let's just say grunt invoke again. Hopefully this time is a charm. Complete, awesome. So AWS S3 LS, if we have a look in the Flynn bucket resize. Duh, duh, duh. All right, we have our cat3 JPEG and that was put in just now at 346. So remember that we said we're not gonna call them dot or dash resize anymore. We're just gonna call them cat3. So let's go and grab that and actually see if it's actually working as intended. Boom, and that's been downloaded and it works as intended. We now have the very small picture of our cat3 image. That's 100 by 100. So that's completely done now. And what we can actually do is now that we know our function is working as intended, we can really test it in real time. So I can dump a new photo in now and just watch what happens. So here I have some random picture of myself. I'll just bring this one in. It's called Flynn1JPEG. Um, and we can just hit next, 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 next. And that is done. Now that's in S3, ready to roll. Uh, and the function would be done already. So if we just jump back to the other bucket. So here in the other bucket now we have Flynn1. And there we go. It's 100 by 100. It's a small image of me and my cat in the background. So it's that easy. Now we have a completely automated way of resizing images. All we have to do is upload them into this bucket, right? And again, this can be a completely automated process that's done by your web application, a user's sort of upload, uploading a photo. You can build a whole web application around this sort of thing that just resizes images. It is just awesome what Lambda has to offer when you start to think about all this sort of stuff and how easy that it really is to piece together. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys. Hopefully it's been informative. Hopefully it's been fun for you to pick up and learn a little bit about. Hopefully you've learned something. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about this at all. I'm happy to go through anything, just let me know. Um, until next time though, peace.